Wow. Someone's popular today. Huh? What do you mean? The cats. Just look at them. They adore you. Cats? Oh, yes. These furry rascals are rather lovely, aren't they? Sarah mentioned something about cats not being allowed inside. Really? Well, she's always preferred dogs. But don't worry. We can keep the cats a secret. Kieran won't say anything to her either. And Jenny, well, ladies like her never stay long. She'll probably be gone before next Sunday. Hey, uh, you're not heading towards the kitchen by any chance, are you? Yeah. You hungry? Oh, he wouldn't mind a nice sarnie, yeah. Right, I'm on it.
tasks completed already. Well done, Angeline. You're really doing it. Hmm. I suppose I am. Thanks. But why am I here again? That's how things work on Burnhouse Lane. Once you find it, you can never really leave it. Am I dead? Did I... choke to death coughing? Is that it? No. You're here because it's time for your third task. But I've only just finished the last one. You don't have a lot of time, Angie. You know that. Fine. What do you want me to do now? You must go to the nearby town of Honiton. There's a woman there named Mary Willis. She lives in a house on the far side of town, away from prying eyes. Once, she was on the front pages of all the local newspapers. Now, most have forgotten she even still exists. See, Mary used to be a nurse. A phlebotomist. One day her colleagues caught her stealing blood bags. She was secretly stashing them in the trunk of her car so she could take them home. Mary lost her job, but did not go to jail. Instead, she spent a couple of years on the psychiatric ward, treated for schizophrenia. Okay, but well, what's that got to do with me? You will enter Mary's house and spill a drop of blood into her meal. Then, you must make sure she consumes it. Why? Because blood is where your sickness lives. If you want to cure it, you must first share it with someone else. Someone horrible, like Mary. But won't that kill her? No, it's just part of the ritual. The only meaning it has is symbolic. How do I make her drink it, though? She loves all blood. She'll love yours, too. They call her Bloody Mary for a reason. You'll see. Now, go back before poor old George starves to death. But I... No. Quiet now. Listen. Be still. And let the darkness take you back into your world. Okay. Yeah, I just got something in my throat. Really? Cause that sounded like you were about to choke to death. Don't be silly. It's a smoker's cough, that's all. Okay, if you say so. Hey, guess what? There's a spare bedroom upstairs with an actual bed I could use. But... It's locked, and neither George nor Kieran knows what happened to the key. Maybe you've seen it? I don't know. I've seen a lot of keys. What does it look like? It's, uh, yellow, and it apparently has a, a lion engraved on it. A lion? I think that's the word Kieran used. I honestly can't understand what he's saying half the time. I'll let you know if I see it.
can't you try to feel? How do you suppose those eyes will regard you when the brain is able to understand? You are right, George. They're quite fine, dear. Thank you. Either the body was stolen by members of a death that you human bones You found the key? I didn't realize that I've had it on me all along. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Shall we go in? Don't ask me, it's your room. One of the perks of being an actress is that I always stay in five-star hotels, wherever I go. They have those fancy bathrobes and mint chocolates waiting for you on the pillow. Sometimes they even do room service for pets. <laughs> What'd you imagine? You can order a poached fucking salmon for your fucking chihuahua if that's something that floats your boat. But this house and this room, they're just so much better. In what way? No one's pretending anything here. This shit is real. So are the spiders. Just wait till you find one. I don't mind spiders. This place is... Oh, exactly what I need in my life right now. Jenny. Are you sure it isn't your near-death experience that's making you see things through rose-colored glasses? Because let's face it. This house is a bit shit. I don't care. I haven't felt this good in a long time. Well, in that case, enjoy. I have a little errand to run in Honiton. So I'll see you later, I guess. I hope this errand doesn't involve any serial killers again. In Honiton? Please. The only thing that's capable of killing you in that dead little town is boredom. Sure. I, I didn't mean to patronize you. <laughs> I just... Be careful, yeah? Hey, nurse. Where are you off to? Honiton. Shopping? Not really. I was actually gonna... give some blood. You know. Oh, like to, uh, to save lives and stuff. Yeah, that's right. To save a life.
Hello, Moonlight. Can I call you that? Did you follow me here? To Honiton? Really? Boy, you're gonna wish you didn't. I have a nasty feeling that nothing good's waiting for us here. But, since you're already here... Will you help me again? Let's break inside this chitting old house and give Bloody Mary her medicine, shall we? Shouldn't be here. Run away, amigo. Run away while you can. Not having another bleeding cat sneaking up in here.
dinner, Jeremy. Jeremy? You're Mary's pampered little baby, aren't you? At least, well, I hope that's all it is between you two. for Jeremy's dinner. Hello 
there, Angel. I've been waiting for you. What the fuck happened to you? Oh, I tried to run away. I almost made it too. But I didn't expect this house would close on me like that. What do you mean? I mean that... <sighs> she made sure I never try to run again. You can't run away without legs. But what did she take your arms off for? I had strong arms, you know. One day, I went for the pig. I tried to strangle it. I wanted to beat that fucker's fat ugly face into a pulp. See, you can't defeat Mary without killing the pig first. I mean, you can try, but it's like punching a concrete wall. It just ain't gonna work. So, she amputated your limbs as punishment for attacking her pig? That's not even the worst part. She made me watch. I'm sorry. It's fine now. I've accepted my fate. I'm just a dead man waiting for my angel to take me home. What's the deal with the pig? That fucking pig. They share a bond, they do. She loves the pig, and the pig loves her. But there's more to it. It's almost as if that bastard is the source of her power. She bottle feeds the pig with the blood she drains from my body. And in return, I know it's crazy, but that damned animal makes her strong as an ox. And honestly, there's no stopping her in a fight. I saw it with my own eyes. If you want to get to Mary, deal with the pig first. Right. Noted. I have to go. Yes. You fly, my angel. Fly like a bird. What's your name? Ben. I used to run a barber shop. But that was then. And now, it's gone. Everything's gone. I have to go. Yes. Mrs. Willis. Miss. Miss Willis. What do you want? My name is Detective Kagan, and this is Detective Underseat. We just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Can we come in? Not really. I'm in the middle of something. You're not going to keep us out in this rain, are you? It's just a standard procedure. We won't take long. Oh, 
Hey, I said! You just barged in! That's rude! Very, very rude! We're looking for someone. A man. Tall, dark hair, in his forties. Goes by the name... Benjamin Mitchell. What's that got to do with me? He's gone missing two months ago. So? Lots of people do. Right, of course. And when they do, it's our job to look for them. Yeah? Well, it's not to do with me. So go away and leave me alone. Is that blood on your fridge door? What? Oh, that. I... I had chicken liver for lunch. Ah, chicken liver. That's my favorite. Don't be disgusting, Dave. But that soup smells nice. You and your veggies? I just don't get you people. Look, I'm very busy. What? What's that sound? Did you hear that? Yes, like little feet tapping on the floorboards. Is there someone else in the house of you, Mrs. Willis? No. But someone's clearly walking upstairs. It's just the bloody rain tapping on the bloody window. Let's check it out, Detective. Wait. Stopped. Don't say I didn't bloody warn you. It's Miss... Miss Willis. Why is it so hard to remember? What a mess! Now I'll have to clean up these two. But not without my cleaning tool. You're such a good pig, Jeremy. Thank you.
Give me the gun, Jeremy. Come on, you don't need it. Pigs don't use guns. I hope. Stay away from that hole. You spiteful bastard. Oh no! Don't tell me, it's already seven. Bloody hell, it's time for the soup! <laughs> Looks like you two ugly birdies will have to wait your turn. Be mad to eat those bloody things. It's time for your soup, idiot. I'm not hungry. Oh, don't give me that. I've had a difficult day. I don't care. Oh, you don't care, do you? I shit on you and your fucking soup. Oh, yeah? Didn't I bloody tell you? I'm having a difficult bloody day. Fuck you, bitch. Nice. Real nice. Right. Well... Here comes your soup, whether you want it or not. There, it's done. I won't have to put up with any of your dilly dallying anymore. It's you again. Who else did you expect? Hi. You are right. I'm fine. Come on. 
You are so not. Pale skin, bags under your eyes, that worried look on your face. Okay. Yeah. You're right. I feel like shit. And there's this mad woman with a pitchfork who wants to turn me into pig food. But... I'm dealing with it. What about you? How are things here? Well... I'll be honest. Things have been pretty fucked up lately. What's wrong? <sighs> it's Ruby. She's gone. Ruby? Oh, the new big girl. From the cellar? Yeah. She went feral the other night. Just like Destiny. So, I closed the shop. There's no one here that needs my food anymore. I feel like I should leave, but I don't know where to go. Where did Ruby go? The streets, I think. I can hear the pounding of her feet at night sometimes. I just turn off the lights and hide. My advice. If you happen to bump into her, make sure you have enough bullets on you. Or just run. That's what I'd do. She's slow as shit. Just dash past her and you'll be alright. How do I get back now? Why? What's there to go back to? Would you understand if I told you? Hmm. You're right, I probably wouldn't. This place has been my home for as long as I can remember. But it's not mine. Not yet, anyway. All right, all right. I know just the thing. There's this guy. Ben. Ben the Barber. He said he was expecting you. Expecting me? Said something about a haircut. You two had an appointment? Not exactly, but... Well, his shop's here on Burnhouse Lane. Just a few doors down from mine. The problem is the road is blocked. You'll have to go out the back door, then cut through the old swimming pool. But no rush. Have a nice smoke first. I'll open the door when you're ready. Right. I'll have a smoke now. This way. Good luck out there. Hopefully we'll meet again, someday. Thanks. Yeah. See you next time.
it's already open.
Angel, I'm here. Come closer. You came. I knew you would. It's you. The torso guy. I prefer Ben. Ben the barber, at your service, Angeline. How did you grow your limbs back? How? It's simple. That fat evil woman chucked a pot full of boiling hot soup all over me. And I died. Ah, shit. I'm sorry, mate. It's alright. I was too tired to carry on living anyway. And here, on Burnhouse Lane, I can finally give my very last haircut. The finest I've ever done. So, she didn't eat any of the soup? No. Why? Did you poison it? Yeah. Well, sort of. Mary hated the vegetables. She only made it for me. She said a healthy diet was meant to help my body make new blood quicker. And yet, it ultimately killed you. That it did. Ironic, isn't it? Ugh, those Brussels sprouts always made me wretch. I can still smell them, even after death. You didn't help me. Did you not hear the gunshots outside? Forgive me, Angel. I couldn't interfere. That thing was yours to kill. I nearly died. You could have... You could have opened the door and let me in. That's not how it works, I'm afraid. She had to die. There was no other way. Who was she? She was Ruby. You already know that. Yes, but... I feel like I'm missing something here. I want to know the truth. Who was the real Ruby? What does it matter? Come on, Ben. Tell me. Who was she? She was merely a voice inside your head. A voice that says, more. A voice? It's gone now, but that's okay. You never liked it anyway. Did you say something about cutting my hair? Yes, the chair's ready for you. But I thought barbers were for men only. Not this one. Women are always welcome here at Ben's. Especially you, Angeline. Just let me know when you're ready. I'm ready for the haircut. Then please, take a seat. If you require a cigarette first, the ashtray's over there. I'll wait. Oh, the scissors feel good in my hands again. God, how I've missed this. It feels like there's this electricity flowing through my veins instead of blood. I wish I'd understood it all before, you know? 
sometimes things just inexplicably happen to us but at the same time these things are what's meant to be I mean a grave digger doesn't bury you in the ground because it pleases him a bee doesn't sting you to cause you pain or a doctor a doctor doesn't cut you open to punish you for something you did they do it because those are the ways of the world and always have been This is the worst haircut talk ever. God. We were happy back then, weren't we? Long ago, in another life. Little kids splishing and splashing in the puddles on rainy afternoons. Mother's calling us home for dinner. So innocent and pure. So delightfully blithesome. Without a care in the world. What? Yeah, well, now, take a deep breath and let it all go. Surround yourself with sweet nothingness. It's cold here and it's dark. But it's a good kind of cold and a good kind of dark. You knew this would come. The moment you start to fade is simply the preparation for what's about to happen. The parts of who you once were begin to crumble and you realise Gratitude. You would have died in that basement if I hadn't showed up just in time to pull you out. I'd rather die than give my blood to your ugly fucking pig. Don't you dare talk like that about Jeremy. He's better than all of you bloody bastards. Seriously. What's with everyone being so bloody rude today? I'm just gonna ignore it. Truth is, I'm really glad you showed up. That stupid bloke was getting all dried up way too fast. I had to let him go. But you... Well, you... You look full of blood. I think it's the start of a long and beautiful friendship, dear. But let's see how you bleed first. Shall we? Oh no. Looks like we're out of needles. I'm sorry, but you'll have to wait. I think I had another box up in the attic somewhere.
say hi to your pile of shit. Pretty late.
It's time to leave Honiton. And never come back. That bite on my leg is really starting to hurt. I won't be able to run. The wound must be deeper than I thought. Wait. Did I succeed in the end? I mean, the soup was a fiasco, but Mary did drink my blood in the end. Straight from my leg. Speaking of which, I must put a dressing on it when I get home. It's way past midnight already. The town's asleep. And again, this town is always asleep. Why did he even park so far away? In hindsight, it was really unnecessary. Thank you.